My name is Paula Andrea Martinez. Uh, you can find me on Twitter via my handle ORCID00. This presentation is open to you via Creative Commons CC BY4 International and I've uploaded to FigChat. So I think I tick all the boxes that Alex just mentioned. <laughs> Great. So from the words that you just added on to the MD hack, I hope some of these are reproduced in this slide. It comes from the World Bank. Uh, it was an analysis they did with um, the Open Data Handbook and the World Bank uh, survey. And they mentioned that open data is many things for different people. So it's an opportunity to share digital resources, make the community participate and empower them by giving them access, giving them transparency on how the data was collected and then um, share with, with everyone by having no restrictions and making it available. So just to expand on that, I'd like to give you the definition of what open data means by the opendatahandbook.org. They say that open data is data that can be freely used, reused, and redistributed by anyone. Um, and on this uh, little cartoon on the right side, it says it's an unusual invitation for you or for anyone to use, modify, and enhance your work. That's the way that we can build on top of other people's work and keep improving them. Um, the concept of open data is actually nothing new. It comes from the, uh, since the internet started, there's some guidelines that people should be following that Tim Berners-Lee put together, trying to make it a very simple step-by-step process to make your data open as much as possible. So the first thing is whatever you want to share, you can put it online in whatever format you have, but under an open license. So we, Alex just mentioned there's different kinds of licenses depending if you have code or if you have text, like in this case, I'm using Creative Commons for the license. Then if you want to go a step farther, you go and make that data available in a structured way. So for example, uh, you can put together all your data collected in a way that nobody can understand them, or you can categorize your data and put it into different sections. How was your process collected? How did you clean your data and how it's, uh, what's the output of that data? The third way is making this data, once it's out there, it's on the internet, you have put it together kind of in a spreadsheet, for example, you can, opt to have a non proprietary or open format. For example, instead of having Excel that not everyone can open, you can have that as a text file or a comma separated uh, file. Um, so that other people who don't have access to an Excel spreadsheet software program, they can open it with an open source software program that exists for other operating systems. Um, the fourth step is that you will add a link or a URI to denote what you are sharing. And that is a URL. And we would like to have this URL as a permanent resource. So something that it's not going to change over time. And it's always going to point to the original data that you are sharing. Uh, once you have that, you make a very good progress. And the last step that you can make to contribute to open data is to link your data. So it's very unusual that you have a data that comes by itself, stands alone and links to nothing. So you have to try to put some extra information about how this data links to other data. If you've collected from other sources, if you've cleaned it from other sources, if you contributed with other people, all those things are things that you can link to your data and it provide context of what the result is. So with these steps, you are helping everyone and making it possible for others to reuse your data in a much meaningful way. Um, to continue with this presentation, I'll touch on these three points that I think are very important when you share your data. First is ethics. The second one is how you link your data a little bit more in detail. And then the fair data principles. 
So first for ethics, uh, a lot of people think that the ethics goes just at the end. So when you try to communicate and distribute your data, you should be ethical in what you're sharing. But instead, I want you to remind yourself that ethics comes from the moment that you apply for funding. So someone is paying for this research and they want this research to be public or no? What's the motivation for that? How are you designing your project? Are you being biased or about your data collection? Um, how are you resourcing your data? How is your analysis being done? Are you um, influencing the results of your analysis by any process that you're taking? How are you interpreting the data? Are you skipping some steps? Are you trying to collect what goes for a better P value on your results, all of that is part of the data ethics. So remember that and, and think that ethics is all the way in your data product life cycle. The other important thing that I think why that open data exists, it's to create knowledge. And to create knowledge, we have to understand each other. So for that, we use standards or also we use the syntax. So for example, I've heard in a presentation about the human genome where people were uploading a lot of human genomes that now are easy to collect, but they will, some people will name it homo, other people will name it human, other people will name it man. So there's so many words that relate to the same thing, but a machine will not know this if they're not part of a vocabulary or an ontology. And to see the difference, I'll recommend you to go into w3.org to see how you can build an ontology, where you can find ontologies that are already existing and how you can contribute to those and name your data in a reasonable way that has a relationship, that has a context and it provides the connection to what you're sharing. Uh, last but not least are the FAIR guiding data principles. This is also not a new concept, but there was a published paper in 2016 about thinking all of the things you do. As a researcher, we usually have this little nice picture of our paper that is two or three pages long that we spend two or three years collecting and cleaning and putting together, right? So there's a lot of work performed that it's not visible to the public. And we want to emphasize all of that. We want to leverage the work that you're doing. We want you to have credit for the work that you're doing. So that's why the FAIR principles were put together as a guideline. And it has um, some steps and recommendations that I've mentioned before. And on this presentation, you have some links that I recommend you to follow. So the gofair.org, explain them in simple English terms about what they are. Then there's the 411 Fair Data Principles Group. If you want to contribute, you can go there and, and help. And a new initiative that I'm also part of the chain committee is um, Fair for Research Software. So, Initially, the FAIR guiding principles were only for data, and now we want to have software as a first uh, citizen having the same principles applied to software. They relate a lot to the data principles, but there's some modifications that we need to do. And you can also read that paper, Towards FAIR Principles for Research Software, that was published last year. Um, some communities uh, that are being part of or that I'm still part of that uh, you can go and look up for more information are the Open Data Handbook by the Open Knowledge Foundation. The last OSL had a presentation by one of the members. There's a lot of information in the Digital Curation Center, not only about open data, but also licensing and many other topics that you're welcome to have a look. There's the Foster Open Science um, that has a lot of open materials that you can reuse. It also has tutorials. You can share them. They are all um, attribution based and they are open. Uh, as before, the Turing way that you might have heard many times already. Then there's also the OpenCon Global Conference that has satellite conferences around the world. Now everything is online, so you can also um, start one of those in your locality. And 
for the top the, the topic of open data, the Research Data Alliance, I think is a very valuable resource. It's a group of volunteers around the globe that enables the open sharing and reuse of data. There's so many different topics I welcome you to be part of them. And as Alex mentioned, if you want to start using open data, what best to put hands on into a hackathon, for example, there's a lot of challenges that you can be solving social, economic and environmental where open data can help. Um, with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. This is um, also um, an open image by Patrick Hostenbach and the the open data is just part of the road to open science that I think all of you are following. And if you have questions, you can contact me by, by Twitter.